Three one. First item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Be it resolved that the agenda for the July 17, 2018 meeting be accepted as presented with the additions of direct deposit 0051 under finance general account, tile drainage workshop, fire chief of the year award, smudging, and a three-way stop sign at the village swimming pool under general business. Come somebody please move that. Councillor McDonald, second by Councillor Bach. Sorry, did you have a moving? That's Councillor McDonald. Okay. Councillor Bach, second it. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, confirmation of minutes. Speed resolved that the minutes of the June 19, 2018 regular meeting be hereby approved as circulated. Have somebody please move that. Councillor Gullet, seconder. Councillor Bach, discussion, any errors or omissions? All in favor? Carried. Be it resolved that the minutes of the June 28, 2018 special meeting be hereby approved as circulated. Moved by Councilor Parity, seconder, Councilor McDonald. Discussion, errors or omissions? Not call the vote. All in favor? Okay. Finance, be it resolved that the July 12, 2018 general accounts payables being checks number 3071 to 3119 in the amount of $48,439.48 be hereby approved. Somebody please move that. Councilor Bach, seconder. Councilor McDonald, discussion? All in favor? Carried. Be it resolved that the direct deposit 0047 being staff payroll for the period June 18th to June 29th, 2018, in the amount of $15,038.58, be hereby approved. Can you please move that? <coughs> Councillor Gullick, seconder. Councillor Bach, discussion? All in favor? Carried. Did you, did you vote? Councillor Bach, did you vote? Yes. Okay. Sorry, sir. I, I, I wasn't maybe looking away. Thank you. I'll use my right hand. Sir. No, that's okay. <laughs> Be it resolved that the direct deposit 0048 being council indemnities for the period April to June 2018 in the amount of $13,204.81 be approved. Have somebody please move that. Councillor McDonald, seconder. Councillor Bach, discussion? All in favor? Carried. Be it resolved that the direct deposit 0050 being staff payroll for the period July 2nd to July 13th in the amount of $14,576.75 be hereby approved. I right, please move that. Councillor Gullett, seconder. Councillor Bach, discussion. Councillor Bach. Just for, uh, we've been doing this, why can't we put those two resolutions into one identifying the dates and the payrolls as one resolution? I'll just pass it on to... Uh, your Worship, it was simply a case that uh, we print them out at the end of each two-week period and we put them in the folder. I've always identified them as two separate payrolls. If Council would like it to be one resolution that would identify the two different direct deposits and the two different amounts in one resolution, I can certainly do that. The downside is, is that if there is any correction or whatever to be made, uh, we would have to be cautious on which part of the resolution we were amending or correcting. Mr. Chair, what's he saying now? You're saying that <laughs> it's possible, but it's cause it can cause a conflict somewhere along the line if you get them together and so you just want to separate them. I, I would take it from that conversation. I would say yes, it's better well, as can being you just separate. Be more explicit to me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I apologize. <laughs> All in favor? Be it resolved that direct deposit 0051 being staff payroll for the period July 2nd to July 13th, 2018, in the amount of $826.71 be hereby approved. This might please move that. Councillor McDonald, seconder. Councillor Bach, discussion. Do you maybe want to clarify this, uh, Joni? I, I wouldn't mind if the councillors know this. I could, Your Worship. Um, we found out after the fact that we had two employees who had missed the cutoff deadline for the normal payroll. Um, under normal circumstances, we would probably run it into the next payroll. But as one of the individuals is uh, a student, we thought that it was prudent when we could to go ahead and pay it in the two-week period rather than rolling it over. All in favor? Carried.
Okay, the utility, utility account be it resolved that the July 12, 2018 utility accounts payables being check numbers 368 to 377 in the <coughs> amount of $9,433.59 be hereby approved. If somebody please move that. Councilor McDonald, seconder. Mr. Gullet, discussion? All in favor? Carried. Statement of revenue and expenditures. Be it resolved that the Statement of Revenue and Expenditures Report to June 30th, 2018 be received as presented. Somebody please move that. Councillor Bach, seconder. Councillor McDonald. Uh, discussion? That, okay. Uh, did Your Worship, can I add something? Please. Um, this is the first time in this year that we are starting to report variances. As such, internally, we identified that there's a couple of accounts that we will need to make uh, journal entries on. So an example of that is um, account number 510-200-201, which is mileage for the office. When it, we look at it, it looks as if it is being overspent. And in fact, when we take a look at the history of that, there are a couple of spots where uh, mileage to attend seminars was included in that. So we will make the correction to put those into the <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I just have a question under the protective services, flood protection and prevention. Was that not from last year? That twenty-eight thousand. Talking expense. Yeah, yeah. it's five twenty five hundred five hundred five hundred one ten. Five twenty five hundred one ten. Or is that the bridge? Is that their bridge? That's a VFA claim. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It's not actually flood. It's just an okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Nothing further. Call for vote. All in favor? Carry. Okay. Delegations. We have no delegations today. No public hearings. No <coughs> petitions. So we'll go right to communications. Uh, okay. Tony? Under communications, we have some information from the American Water Works Association with respect to signing up and being able to receive their water operator field guide. We have information from the Association of Manitoba Municipalities uh, dated June the 25th and June the 28th dealing with code of conduct. We have information from Association of Manitoba Municipalities dated June the 28th with respect to newspaper recycling. Also from AMM dated July the 4th, re-cannabis plebiscite. AMM July the 5th on determining local speed limits. Uh, also July the 5th was the Western District update. From Canada Post, we received information of their proposal to replace some of the group boxes. Federation of Canadian Municipalities sent us communiques dated June the 18th, 22nd, 2 from the 25th, July 4th, and July the 9th. The Manitoba Chapter of General Contractors Alliance of Canada has sent information in with respect to Bill 218. Manitoba Infrastructure Emergency Measures has sent information in on a memorial grant <coughs> program. Manitoba Sustainable Development provided us information on a temporary water use permit that they have approved for Enbridge. Office of the Auditor General has let all municipalities know that they will be conducting audits with respect to development corporations and how we oversee development in the community. 
Seniors and Healthy Aging Branch gave us information on pro promoting participation from an older workforce. And there were several thank you letters received from the various organizations that we provided grants and bursaries to. Yeah, that's how you did that. Okay, so it be resolved that the above noted communications be received. Somebody please move that. Councillor McDonald, seconder. Councillor Parity, discussion. Councillor McDonald. Uh, Your Worship, I have one question regarding Enbridge um, temporary use of the water. It's not going to affect our water flow to the village at all with our wells, anything? Do well, they won't be anywhere close to the village with it. They'll be doing it from different locations but out of the Suris River they're right that's it, my concern I just wondered if I don't know what kind of volume they're going to be using and it says in there that but it's hard to yeah you know, make it out of that I don't think it's going to shouldn't affect our water source right at present uh, the river is up higher again than it was before but yeah it uh, you know the flow from down east or down south is pretty pretty good right now so yeah exactly so I don't I don't foresee that but yes yeah. well, I just wanted to ask some <coughs> Cruz thoughts there so Thank you. Anything further? No. Call the vote. All in favor? Carried. Okay. Committee reports. Uh, Councilor Gullett, you have a written report. Anything to add? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just that uh, talking to Barry, it sounds like most of the mowing the first time's cleaned up and it uh, really mowed looks really good. And the one other, it's more of a statement than anything. I have. Uh, Bit of an issue with that story in the <coughs> Southwest Post that uh, by Councillor Rome saying that uh, basically insinuating we're buying boats by fixing uh, Green Acres Road. That road has been on discussion with the old Oakland Council for at least five years about doing something with it. So uh, it's far from a vote buying gimmick. It needs done. Should have been done years ago, actually. And that's all I have. Okay. Councillor Block, you have a report? Just a short one. I thought it was going to be pretty quiet till last night when I got a phone call about smudging. And I see that's on the agenda, so we can deal with that at an appropriate time. Anything further? No. Thank you, sir. Councillor Rome, you have a written report. Do you want to add anything to it? Yeah, nothing further, no. Councillor McDonald, you have a written report. Anything to add? Uh, no, and I included my handy van with that okay. report also. Right. Um, okay. Councilor Parity, you have a written report. Anything to add to that? Uh, nothing further at this time. Okay. I have my report. There's nothing further to add to it. Uh, CAO's report, anything further? Nothing further to add. Finance report, Elf Elaine, do you have anything to add? Okay. Public works report, Council Sarah to uh, Darcy, if you'd like to. Yes, I've got uh, more of a comment, I guess. It's uh, in regards to, we've still got, we're out of budget essentially for the road construction, and we're kind of, whatever's left is kind of pending to see what we get for the provincial uh, government for the Green Anchors Road. There's still frostball areas, and some spots we should be getting fixed. We have money in the uh, culvert budget, and I'd like to propose maybe we take shift some of that and put it into fixing some of these other frost bowls on Trees Bank and there's a couple areas. Do you have that account, uh, Elaine, over mm -hmm. there, as to what the, what is left there in that account? Which one is referencing? Do you foresee anything as far as culverts and that sort of thing that's 
going to come up between now and the end of the year. Okay, so as far as the <coughs> frost boils, you have a plan as to what you're looking at in, in spending this? Uh, yeah, there's uh, five anyways identified. Okay. Uh, Trees Bank, uh, right by the well, Trees Bank well, there's two big spots there, Oakland Colony, and then there's a mile north of Oakland Colony. Okay. Up to number 10 Highway, there's a pretty significant one that needs to be addressed. Okay, so now we have been digging these out. Do you have a different plan at all for that, that, for these ones to get them done faster? Or? Some of them we may be able to just haul shale and build up the road. Okay. Some of those areas. That'll be a quicker fix? In front of their yard, that will have to be dug out. Probably that one on the Trees Bank Road will need to go too, right? Eh? Yeah. Like you're talking east of the well? East of the well because that's yeah. the old rail crossing. And actually, when I was grading it a week or two ago, we were pulling timbers. Timbers were getting cut out of the road. So, mm. yeah, it's the organics. I guess they must have from the organics and all these timbers that are rotting now, and that's causing a problem while that water yeah. staying there. It's got to come out of there. Yeah, yeah it's got to be that there. Okay. One of the other questions I have is that uh, I know that with all the frost wells and, and repairs attempted, to, et cetera, that we have our grading has been helter skelter, new staff, et cetera. And yeah. have a, you have a plan for that going forward? If we hire a contractor mm -hmm. that can just focus on the frost wells, we won't have to rob from ourselves internally. Okay. And they can keep on the roads with yeah. more schedule? That's why I'm pull from the Calder bucket okay. to help alleviate that, to keep us going on the roads. And now that's an internal thing more than anything else. I don't think you need a resolution for that, do you? No, Your Worship, uh, it would all fall under the transportation right. uh, section, so it'll end up showing that the road reconstruction is overspent, that the culvert would be underspent, so your overall, you would remain within budget. Okay. That'll get us back on schedule with our roads, because I, I know there's been some people calling, etc. I know I've, I've received some calls, travel the roads quite a bit, and, and although they're, you know, for the most part, uh, I see what they're talking about, but it's a lot of work that's going to be being, uh, has to be undertaken for them, and that's, uh, as long as we have a plan for it, I think that's more than anything else that they, these people want to see. So you know, we still have like 35,000 road construction to match that grant if we get it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Not, uh, yeah, I have no problem. They, those frost walls need fixed too. I agree. Yeah. Any further, Councillor McDonald. Oh, uh, your worship, just Dar to Darcy. Uh, we're not going to go over the forty thousand if we do this for like you're not going to go. You're not going to exceed the forty thousand. Okay. okay. Anything else that you want to add, Darcy? That's all I Okay. Your worship, if I could, um, I provided all members of council with information about uh, grading against traffic and uh, it's just more as a reminder for anybody if you're getting asked why it is that uh, there's the dead heading that happens it is very specific that um, we cannot go against traffic anytime there is an increase or decrease in grade there is a hill there is a bridge there is no passing there is Meters. 150 meters in one location and in uh, the other section it's you cannot go against traffic 90 meters for every intersection and so even if the visibility is good if you are attempting to go against traffic every mile you are going to run into the area where uh, you'd have to pull out and go to the correct side of the road which would probably take more time coming back to fix those in and outs so I just provided that in the event that anybody is being asked about it. And this is uh, this is the Highway Traffic Act. This isn't. Uh, it, it, I mean, there's there's some people talk. Well, the police say it's okay. This has, got, has nothing to do with police. They may not charge. Uh, lay, a, lay a charge because it's not uh, within uh, in a realm of being charged. As much as this is the Highway Traffic Act, and this has a lot to do with uh, liability, etc. So um, this is directive coming from. Uh, administration and as, as such unless council sees a, a reason to change it 
um, this is the way it's going to be. So if somebody wants to put, put forward a resolution that we go against the highway traffic, we have, that's uh, something you'll have to dis decide yourselves. Okay. Drew, uh, you have anything to add to your report? Do you have a written report? Uh, your Worship, just one thing. I'm just uh, a little concerned about the report that we got from the engineer uh, and Traver, Travis Parsons from Water Services Board. Uh, there seemed to be a lot of things in there that uh, uh, were different than what I had heard the first time around, especially from the guy that drilled the test hole. Yeah. Uh, in uh, what he said uh, we would have there for volume of water to what they put in the report and they weren't even there when we did the test hole. Yeah, there's some questions there but at the same time the other part of that is that whether we can get a uh, I guess approval for it to be used as drinking water I guess more than anything else that's uh, that was the bigger to me the bigger crux in that issue is it maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong on that Joni you saw the report. Um, I did. Um, I agree. I don't know whether it's a case of mistaking a two for a five, which is, is quite possible. But in speaking with Office of Drinking Water, uh, what they have advised is where they may have allowed us to use the well uh, in an emergency situation such as we were in at the start of July when we had the test well drilled, they may have allowed us to use it on a temporary basis, would have probably meant including a boil water advisory but what they are saying is that if we are actually wanting to drill a well that we're going to use on a bit more of an ongoing <coughs> basis, uh, they are likely, likely not to approve it in a flood area or where uh, it is as close as that to the river. And that was what I heard from them yesterday. It's one of those things that uh, we thought we'd get the easier way out and look pretty uh, good, but now they're saying they have to get out of the flood area. So they're going to, water services has taken upon themselves and they've got their, their contractors are setting that up with their contractors to dig some have some possible uh, sites within the dike system uh, so along that. Go on personal property and do this. Thing well, they can go anywhere they want when it comes to wells. So uh, with water water services, uh, that's uh, they when it comes to drinking water to human consumption, they can go where they feel they need to go. And if that's what they're going to come with was a solution, then we'll have to wait and see what they come up with. But uh, they have taken upon themselves. We end up we're splitting the different or the uh, the costs with them at this point. So it'll be 50-50 cost cost split for the village, and uh, we'll get that done. Hopefully, they'll be doing it sooner than later. They know we have a, a situation here, so I think they'll be acting quicker than than normal. I hope. Can you maybe elaborate on that, Joni, if that is anything different? Um, what I have heard is that assuming council passes the resolution that is on the agenda later uh, in the agenda, that in fact they would make an effort to be out in Wawanisa tomorrow just to do some preliminary work and we could have some further discussions with them at that point. It doesn't answer your question, Drew, but no, I guess it's... I it's, wish it's, I had known that they were coming tomorrow because I... I have an appointment tomorrow morning, so I can't be around when they're here. Well, so. we say tomorrow, but that... Uh, we can certainly reschedule. We can tell them next day, next day, because we want you around, that's for sure. And, and uh, so we'll make that note. Yeah. Anything further? No. Uh, fire Chief's reports here. Interesting. 20 calls this year so far that they, uh, they've been on. It's uh, interesting. Um, Suris, red report, Councillor Rome? Uh, nothing other than I see that we've uh, remitted our final payment. Joni, is that correct? Yeah. <coughs> so, no, no, nothing other than that. Okay. Andy Trans was included with your report, Councillor McDonald? Yes. Um, personnel and Policy Committee report, there's a written report. Okay, be it resolved that the verbal and written reports be, be received. Reports be received. Can somebody please move that? Councilor McDonald, second by Councilor Parity. Any further discussion on them? If not, I'll call for vote. All in favor? Carried. Okay, bylaws. There is nothing. Unfinished business. Uh, 
on the safety concern for provincial trunk highway 340 within Wamanisa, whereas the cost to purchase permanent radar boards cannot be accommodated within a 2018 budget. Therefore, be it resolved that the province be requested to install temporary radar boards this fall within their existing program and costs for permanent boards be considered during the 2019 budget deliberations. Can I have somebody please move that? Councillor Parity, second by Councillor Bach. Discussion? Call for vote. All in favor? Okay, Joan. This is your baby. <laughs> it's all our fault. <laughs> You've done the most work on it, so I'll, I'll, I'll just speak to that part of it. Okay. <laughs> um, at the last meeting of council, I was requested to finalize or find out what some costs would be associated associated with a opportunity for a ready-to-move building that could perhaps be used as an office building. As of yesterday, uh, the building is still for sale. Uh, they are asking a purchase price of $250,000 and then a uh, letter, I guess, receiving the rest of it as a grant for what the value of the building would be. Renovations, until we have an opportunity to go out and actually take a look at it, um, I'm not comfortable trying to quote a, a cost, but I was told that uh, we could certainly remove a wall between two of the doctor's offices as they exist now if we were wanting to create a boardroom or there would be a way at the front area where they had a waiting room where it could be created uh, to give a boardroom. Moving the building, um, again this is kind of rough costing because I'm not sure what the actual dimensions of the building are and how high it is as to whether or not there would be wires or signage but we would be looking at probably $18,000 to $22,000. How much? Eighteen to twenty-two thousand dollars to move it. To move it. Yeah. Uh, pouring a concrete foundation was estimated at forty thousand. Installing septic and water tanks, uh, either six thousand or eight thousand, depending on what sides we were looking at. The hydro hookup, assuming that we could uh, go from uh, existing posts, would be about a thousand dollars. Now that doesn't include whatever there would be for electric electrician costs. Um, so using those numbers, it's a, a cost of about $321,000 in trying to get just some rough estimates from contractors. Uh, I was told that for an office building, you're likely not to touch it under uh, probably $200 to $250 a square foot. And so I will leave that with council as to whether or not you want any further action to take place on this or not. Uh, I guess in order to discuss, to discuss this, we should have a resolution on the table. And um, be it resolved that, uh, well, I don't know how can it We could simply put it that it be received, have the opportunity to, okay. to discuss it and see if there's any further action. Okay. okay be it resolved that the item be received. Can somebody please move that? Councillor Box, seconder Councillor Gullett. Discussion? Okay, I'll start it off then. Number one, I, I'm not sure that th this is our biggest priority. I understand Joni's concern basically has been council meetings. She has to uh, move everything every time there's a council meeting, as uh, same with Elaine. Whereas we have it in an office, we'd be, if this building were one we used, we could probably have our council chambers in there and council meetings would take place in that building where she would just be able to bring her necessary instruments at that time just to this room. Uh, so I, I understand her concerns there. I, I'm not so concerned that we need a new office as much as I think we need a new shop. So I'll put those two items out. So if you, anybody else wants to make mention of it? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I sort of agree with you. Our shop is uh, outdated badly, and I think if it's probably the priority. But I, I do agree, our, maybe it's something that could be built at the same time as a lean to or something for office space, like probably be more cost effective, maybe that way. It, it but I'm not sure about the safety concerns now with attaching yeah. in offices to shops, too, because I know that's a problem now, too. And if I could, Your Worship, sure. it wasn't so much that I believed that the office building needed to be done 
as this was something that was sent out and given that they are asking less than construction costs, I uh, didn't know if it was something that council wanted yeah. to even take a look at at this time. Well, it's a great discussion point because I think you have to, when you get those opportunities, you have to address that. But Councillor Modell, or, or no. uh, Councillor Parity. Yeah. I would just like to uh, concur there that the, I believe the shop is a higher priority at this month, at this time. Not that I, the, the office does need to be upgraded and we should have a council chamber attached to the office rather than this road show that we have. But uh, the shop is in an awful condition. Yeah. Councilor Buck. Mr. Chair, it seems that we keep, keep talking that the shop has been a priority and we should be looking at it, but we have not mandated anybody to seriously look at looking at the cost of a shop and I would like to put an onus that we prioritize that for 2019 well, well, the shop would be um, okay I, I, I don't know that we could tell the next council that that's what they should be doing but uh, we can we can no, table it on the basis that it should go to the new council or whatever the case may be for them to discuss at that time. But I, I don't know. At this point, we're only three months away from the election, basically. Um, and to start putting something on the books as major as a new shop, I think is a pretty tricky thing, and I don't think that would be wise. It's my own personal opinion. Uh, Your Worship, we do have an ad hoc committee in place. Uh, there would be nothing stopping that committee from doing some investigation just to get an idea of what prices might be. Right. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's what you're kind of aiming yeah, at, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to. Yes, thank you. Councilman Dawson. Uh, Your Worship, I'd just, I just like to add, I, I think the shop is, uh, is a priority myself also, and along with an office attack or something. But I just want to add, uh, I know uh, a municipality a couple of, uh, over, they, they were uh, going to build a shop and they got into it just doing it as council and a committee within council and they end up it got too big for them so they actually ended up costing a bunch of extra money and going to uh, to get uh, drawings and uh, get it all done that way so I just want to caution us when we get to that point he it ended up costing a bunch more money to go that route so I just wanted to pass it on any further um, should we amend the resolution then to your Worship, there doesn't need to be a motion to, not to, to not take to do action. It. It's just a matter of just saying we received it and we discussed it. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, all in favor of this being received? Okay. Whereas an Allocation was in, included in the 2018 budget for software applications and support services for the Connect program for municipal and emergency use. Therefore, be it resolved that the software license agreement between allnet.ca incorporated and the municipality be approved and executed on behalf of the municipality. Can somebody please move that? Councillor McDonald, seconder. Councillor Bach, discussion. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? room is opposed okay, okay. Uh, asset management readiness assessment workshops uh, be it resolved that the expression of interest be provided to the Association of Manitoba municipalities for support our uh, participation in the asset management readiness assessment workshops whereby if selected the fee of $150 shall be expended from the convention and training budget I'm sorry please move that Councillor Gullet seconder Councillor Bach, discussion. Can uh, Joni, uh, can you give us a uh, chair, please, Mr. Chairman? Uh, to the CAO, can you give us a uh, description of, of uh, what this involves? Okay. Certainly through you. Um, my understanding of it is that the Federation of Canadian Municipalities are going to make available uh, grant money for asset management. Part of what the Association of Manitoba Municipalities is attempting to do is to hold some workshops to assist municipalities in what they are going to need to put forward in order to access those grant allocations. And from what we are hearing from some of the other municipalities, a lot of them in fact are hiring somebody to do the asset management 
and this grant process could help offset those costs. Thank you. Anything further? If not, let's call for vote. All in favor? Great. Right. Okay, uh, be it resolved that an in inv investigation to develop an additional well for supply of water to Almanisa be approved as outlined in the report of Steve Wycheck of uh, W.I. Gibbons and Associates Incorporated, dated July 3rd, 2018, whereby the associated cost shall be expended from the utility reserve. Can we please move that? Councillor McDonald, second by Councillor Parity. Discussion? Councillor McDonald. Uh, Your Worship, just wondering what status is our water line to the village at? Like, if, if it was going to be fairly soon, is this maybe not a as high priority? But if it's going to be a year or two down the road, then yes, I definitely. Well, as I can tell you, that as far as water services is concerned, we haven't heard anything back on an application to get it from South Cyprus at this point. We're waiting. They say it's been received. They're waiting for, I guess, funding through <coughs> the provincial and federal governments. And uh, once that's done, I think we'll hear further. I mean, they, again, they know our, the priority of it all, um, so that's there. That correct? That is correct. Thank you. Anything further? I'll call for vote. All in favor? Carried. Be it resolved that the policy number PR013, being the drug and alcohol policy, be approved. Have come to you. Please move that. Moved by Councillor McDonald, second by Councillor Parity. Discussion? Everybody's got a copy of it? Everybody's read a copy of it? Do you want any background on it? Sure. Um, implementation of this policy is um, probably being spurred by the upcoming legalization of cannabis. Um, in taking a look through our existing policies, we did not have uh, a drug or alcohol policy. What the policy is aiming to do is uh, keep safe the employees, but also reduce risk for the municipality. And in doing that, uh, basically what they are stating is that it is never okay to be impaired at the workplace. And that impairment can be uh, too much cough syrup, right through to uh, use of prescription medication. And um, we've reviewed this policy with staff uh, indicating that you know if there are requirements for people to take medication we will certainly work with them to try and coordinate a way to ensure that it doesn't affect the workplace and additionally if there's anybody that does have any um, dependencies or <coughs> problems uh, we're really encouraging uh, self uh, acknowledgement of that and coming forward in a way that uh, that we could assist the employee so that is the basis of the policy. It was, um, a lot of it was drafted through People First, which is the organization that works with AMM to assist small municipalities with HR issues. And in turn, they had ran it through their uh, legal department to make sure that it is as straightforward and simple as can be, uh, keeping in mind that the goal is to ensure employee safety. Uh, I think one of the best parts of the whole thing is the accommodation. I think that's so important with uh, individuals. Some people don't recognize they have a problem, and, and uh, it's important we do that. <coughs> Any further? I'll vote all in favor? Carried. Be it resolved that the emergency coordinator be authorized to attend the 2018 Disaster Management Conference being held in Winnipeg, Manitoba on October 10th to 12th, whereby related registration, hotel, and meals mileage and out-of-pocket expenses shall be reimbursed in accordance with bylaw 0315. Have somebody please move that. Councillor Box, seconded by Councillor Gullett. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, do you want to do this one? Um, Good. I can do it too, I guess. It's not major, but I think you have more to say. Go ahead. I do. Um, once again, we are starting to run out of storage space within our file cabinets. There is a regulation in place that speaks to uh, the amount of time that you have to retain certain information and the method in which you can destroy it. What we have done is taken a look at the items that 
we believe we can certainly start disposing of now. Any of the ones where we have felt that there are uh, files that we would want to maybe hang on to past their retention and destruction timeline, we have not included them in this item. So a majority of this is, um, a lot of it is correspondence, so anything more than a year old. But there are also things such as timesheets, employee files, and before we can get rid of them, we actually do have to have the resolution of council to do that. Okay, uh, now therefore be it resolved that the following records be disposed of in accordance with the regulation. Can somebody please move that? Councillor Councilor McDonald, seconder. Councillor Bach, discussion? Not call for vote, all in favor? Mm -hmm. Okay, the Wawanese Alliance Club. Uh, be resolved that a grader be provided if available for the Wawanese Alliance Club Touch a Truck event being held in conjunction with the Country Fair at Wawanese Recreation Center on August 25th, 2018. Have somebody please move that? Councillor McDonald, seconder. Councillor Gullett, discussion. Councillor McDonald. Hi, Your Worship. Just August 25th, is that uh, Monday to Friday or is that a weekend? I believe that is a Saturday. I could tell you right away. It's August 25th. It's a Saturday. My concern is just uh, having a unit there without an employee, or we would be paying an employee premium time to be there with it, right? That's my concern. Did you. Your Worship, anytime I have seen a touch a truck, um, the machinery itself is not moving, uh, so it's an opportunity for kids to come and take a look in it and climb in it. That's not to say that you may not want to have um, somebody in attendance, and if that's the case, then we would need to amend the resolution accordingly, because as it stands now, our staff aren't typically uh, working on a Saturday. Councillor Rome. Mr. Chairman. As I understand, and as Joni has just confirmed, uh, it would be a case of, of uh, kids and people climbing in, in and out of a, a grader uh, without an employee there to actually control what, what they're doing. I don't think that's uh, very wise. I, I don't think we can uh, put a piece of equipment like that there without an employee. And I, I don't really believe that we should be paying an employee overtime to uh, to sit there all day. Councillor Walker. Mr. Chair, if somebody likes to volunteer, an employee who wants to volunteer to sit beside the grader, would that be acceptable? That would be up to the employee, I guess. Yeah, and that would be Council's on, call. On, on the basis that we can do it, can amend the resolution that uh, with uh, volunteer time by an employee, so wished, Councilor McDonald? Uh, just thinking on, oh, your worship, sorry. Um, I would just, that that is a very good point, and I, I was just thinking because it's as easy as somebody hits a button in there and your lights stay on and kill the battery. So if we had a, a volunteer of, a, of an operator or a counselor want to be there and turn the master switch off at the end of the day and make sure they're not, you know, that, that there is some kind of... Uh, they're not jumping around in there or doing damage. Maybe that's an option, but um, I would I wouldn't like to see it unmanned. So I guess what the maybe resolution would be without any uh, proof, without any further cost to the municipality. What I have done, if I'm hearing, is I've made it that if equipment and staff or member of council is available, so it would have to be with no further cost to the municipality. No, with no cost. Just an add on to that, uh, Mr. Chairman. If you, uh, if anyone read the uh, the recent article by the uh, Canadian Safety Council with regard to uh, young people around equipment on farms and, and construction equipment, um, they don't recommend that that uh, kids have <coughs> have any uh, contact with equipment until they're, you know, 14 or older. So I'm, I'm not sure that this is really something that we should be getting ourselves into. I mean, it could be as easy as a youngster climbing up the, 
the steps and taking a misstep and falling. Mr. Walk. Chair, I had an opportunity to go to Calgary and the Air Force and the military. They had their big tanks and tractors and airplanes and everything else. And the kids were all there having a great time, enjoying the equipment. And some of us, some old people had wanted to get into an airplane, couldn't get in line up because there was too many kids in front of them. But I think if we had a volunteer there with safety conscious, I think we, with what Councilor Roman's mentioning that. that that's a different situation where these pieces of equipment are stationary and they're not moving. Uh, I could I'll, be wrong. Yeah, I, I'll give you this, and this is something I know I had firsthand uh, access to is at the Manitoba Winter Fair on in the uh, Keystone Center this year. My two nine year olds were caught on top, on top of combines and tractors that were on display with absolutely nobody around. And they're, they're just full of kids. And uh, I. You know, I think we're putting too much into this. If we're, if this is just a, you know, I read a touch the truck community event. I don't, I, we might be overthinking it. Any case, that's, uh, nothing further. Um, I'll call for vote. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. opposed. Okay, uh, be it resolved uh, that. Councillors be authorized to attend the Tile Drainage Workshop in Hartney, on Manitoba, on July 27, 2018, whereby any registration, mileage, or out-of-pocket expenses shall be reimbursed in accordance with Bylaw 0315. Can somebody please move that? Councillor McDonald, seconder. Councillor Bach, discussion. Anybody uh, interested in going? Okay. No. Councillor Bach. I'd, be, oh, okay. I'd see that any council member, because of the new tech, uh, information that's being out about tile drainage, should yeah. make them uh, available to attend okay, so well, we can answer some questions to the ratepayers. So if we leave it as councilors or council members of council, I guess I should have said, we can amend that, amend that. So be it resolved that members of council be authorized. Is there any desire to have a member of the administration? Oh, okay, we put order administration. Your Worship, would be uh, any value in Darcy going to that as he's our person that deals hands-on with them? I think maybe it's something he could attend if he sees that it might benefit. Well, it's, uh, leave that up to whether it's approved or not. <laughs> At that point, we can say, you know, anybody is available if they, can, if they want to just uh, let council, let uh, Joni know or whatever. But we well, have to get this either voted for or against. Any further? All in favor? Okay. So we can just leave that open as to who will, would what like to go. Okay, Fire Chief of the Year Award. Uh, be it resolved that Chief Gullet be nominated for the Voluntary Fire Chief of the Year Award. I'm sorry, please move that. Councilor McBach, second by Councilor McDonald. Uh, discussion, if any? There's a lot of information we can put into that. and. Uh, there is your worship, and I did um, speak with Chief Dane to see whether or not perhaps a letter coming from the Brandon Fire Department for the assistance provided to them uh, would be available, and he indicated he would certainly be more than happy to do that. I think want to include their training schedule. It was a lot of training with the young firefighters here as well as the existing old ones. Okay, all in favor? Great. Okay, smudging. Um, I don't want to start this off. We had the resolution on before. We did, Your Worship. Can we kind of revisit that again and see what we. Uh, Correspondence from a ratepayer and went on further to say be it further resolved that the administration investigate the surrounding municipalities and the existing bylaws, including enforcement options with respect to smudging, and be it further resolved that the administration speak with the affected property owners in an effort to bring about a resolution satisfactory 
to all parties. Okay, so that's the existing resolution. Correct. We uh, really didn't say yay or nay to it. Um, the report back, Your Worship, in having checked with other municipalities, they don't attempt to regulate smudging. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of municipalities, the uh, bylaw actually that I was referred to as a good example is the RM of Cornwallis. And so um, we took a look at their bylaw. In looking at it, their enforcement part of it, they have a bylaw enforcement officer. So if there was any concerns, it would be their bylaw enforcement officer who would uh, investigate. As far as they knew at the time that I called and uh, the CAO was going to investigate further, uh, she's not aware that they have ever uh, really included smudging as such and she wasn't entirely sure if they have ever issued any fines. So she was going to check. I also um, spoke with Brandon only because I was on or involved with council at the time that they were looking at their um, outdoor burn pits and how they were looking at any um, complaint issues that came in and in the 10 years or whatever that it has been in place, uh, they also have never revoked a permit for health reasons or safety reasons. Um, they have found in most instances it is an issue between neighbors and they have left it that it be addressed as such. I'm not sure what more council might want us to attempt to do or, or what action we could possibly take. Councilor Rome. Mr. Chairman, uh, those photos that uh, are in our package were forwarded to me and it was clearly evident that the, there was smoke all around the, the uh, neighbor's house and across uh, the low area of Tower Road. <clears throat> I don't know that this is a uh, fact, but I was mm -hmm. told that one party contacted the uh, Brandon Fire Department and was told that, yes, it is illegal to continuously burn bales. I mean, you can, I guess you can put whatever terminology you want to it, whether it's smudging or whatever it is. I think it's really unfortunate that we have... Um, a situation where uh, we have health concerns. Uh, the individual last night, they had to close their windows. Uh, the, the one individual has asthma, so had to utilize their uh, inhalers. Um, I think if it was, we are, you know, as, as we've referred to many times, we are one municipality, and I think if we were dealing with this situation in a next door situation in the village, uh, it would take on a little bit different context. Um, I think we have to be serious about this cont continuous burning of materials that uh, that affect neighbors because I think they all have the right to to uh, you know enjoyment of their outdoors and, and uh, not having smoke continuously in their yard. Um, continuous burning is I mean is, as farmers uh, we have to get a permit. We have to do it within the hours that are prescribed and it has to be extinguished before dark, I believe. Is that not right, Joanne? That is correct. So, you know, I think at, le at the very least, we need to develop a bylaw that covers this in the same manner. This is burning of straw and hay material that is done for a purpose other than farming. But if we approach it in the same manner and say, okay, you can only do it d during daylight hours, uh, at dark or at, at dusk, it must be extinguished. Then I think it's, it, it's fair. But I mean, I think we have to put our, ourselves in the same position. Uh, and thankfully, we don't have much of this going on. But I think we have to put ourselves in the same position and ask if we would like to be in the position where we have smoke in our yard on a continuous or a fairly regular basis that takes away the enjoyment of, of our property. Mr. Buck? Mr. Chair, I could, we could debate this and argue about this, but the rate payer that I had the conversation with, they had a meeting prior to this previously, and they had made an agreement to certain conditions and to the provincial guidelines, and they adhered to it all. They had a containment area, and it was, and it was continuous. 
the only edit for that evening. And it, when, when it became sunset, the individual went there and did remove, killed the fire, killed the smudge, to follow the guidelines that they were agreed to. And above that, the rest of it's, uh, so to say it was continuous is a little bit of an exaggeration, but they did abide to the rules that they were set, set out. That's it. I don't know. I, um, it's a tough situation. I, I understand every side of this thing, but it's just a matter that, does this now become more of a civil matter rather than a municipal matter? Well, as I said, I think when we have the bylaw in effect that uh, controls burning on farms, why can that same bylaw not extend to our small holdings? Well, I guess when you look at that, is, is the smudging not a part of animal, animal husbandry? Uh, well, there's, you look there's, at that, there's that, lots that of ways to justify why farmers would like to burn after dark, too. Uh, is that not, was that not a part of normal farm practices? And yes, it was when I was young and, and so on. Uh, <laughs> that has all changed. And I think we have to, to uh, I wouldn't agree that it's part of animal husbandry, no. I, I, some people utilize it, but, you know, and, and again, farmers, some people burn, some don't. Yeah, I, so uh, I'm not going to say it's right or wrong. I don't know. But, some don't. Uh, Your Worship, I just wondering, like, and, and we got back, <coughs> we spoke of this earlier on, po possibly a policy that adheres to some of the, the guidelines that's set out by the province, and then we would have it. Well, if, and maybe I'll let Joni just. Your Worship, what I can me. certainly do is provide counsel um, with the bylaw that I was indicated was was good bylaw. I could certainly ship it around and let everybody take a look at it. I'm not opposed to amending our current uh, burn bylaw. I think there's certainly room to improve it. Um, the question is going to become, so for instance, in this bylaw, it speaks to open burning, which is outdoor burning of combustible material where smoke is allowed to discharge into the open air from the ground or other burning device, but does not include burning of a bonfire. And then when you take a look at their as to where it can be done, burning within the limits of the municipality, except as indicated in, and they, they list some areas, um, open burning is permitted. So again, it would have to be done in conjunction with whatever the provincial regulations are, which does include the fact that it cannot burn unattended overnight, and I believe um, speaks to the fact that it needs to be in a contained, whether it's a burning barrel or a trough or something. Uh, we could certainly look to amend the bylaw in that regard, but if I could provide the bylaw to council to take a look at and see if that is the direction you would like our bylaw to go, then I can certainly prepare something accordingly. Anybody in agreement with that? Resolve that information be provided to council with respect to amending the burning bylaw. <coughs> Second, please move that. Councillor Rome, second by Councillor Buck. All in favor? Okay. okay. Three way stops on it, village. Right. So, do we want a resolution or not? Or is that, that we just put it to uh, table it on the basis of? Review by administration. Okay, so then that administration be directed to review the possibility of a three way stop yep. at the pool, swimming pool. Just so that I'd be resolved that administration be directed to review implementation of a three way stop at the village pool. Councilor, okay, please move that. Councilor Parity, seconder. Councilor Bach, or Councilor McDonald, I'm sorry. Uh, all in favor? 
Okay, be it resolved that this meeting does now adjourn to meet again on August 21st, 2018 at 1 p.m. at the New Horizons Building in Wamanee, East Manitoba. Let me move that, please. Councilor Parity, second by Councilor Bach. All in favor? Aye.